Hey guys, welcome back to Vince Vale Custom. So today I'm sharing with you a Age of Apocalypse cut, uh, resin kit that I put together, and I got he's huge. I did a uh, kit review on him a while back. I'll link that in the video so you guys can check out the kit review on him. But I wanted to get him finished up before the winter set because this so big. Since he's so big, I can't really do a lot of paint work on him in the house because I can't get him in my airbrush booth because he's so heavy, he'd probably crush it. And I, it's just, I had to do a lot of stuff outside in the garage. And I actually used a lot of car paint from a spray can to get the main colors on him because I think it was better to use car paints because it's a little bit more durable. And also, it's just easier to kind of get the main colors on him outside in the garage than trying to, you know, use uh, acrylics all over him. But uh, really great kit, as you saw in the, you know, kit review video which breaks it all down I got them all together uh, like I said there was no seam work really on him everything went pretty smoothly the only uh, big uh, downside on him was the cape uh, as you can see uh, we'll turn him around a little bit uh, there's a big chunk uh, of that goes into his back so what I did is I put a really big magnet when I say a magnet uh, I would say the magnet is probably about like you know uh, about two and a half inches, three inches long, and it was about like that thick, you know, about uh, about an inch or so. So I put that magnet in that piece, and then I put a chunk of metal in his body. I didn't put another magnet in his body because I think too many magnets in there would be really hard. And trying to pry off this cape, if you ever have to, you might break the cape because there's so much force in there. So what I did is I put like a metal rod going in the back, and that worked out pretty good. And uh, the cape goes in fine, it's nice and sturdy, uh, that works out really great. And so I'll kind of break down how I did everything else. But um, the heads are not magnetized, so I got the one head here, and then this head just kind of falls into place. Uh, like I said, I didn't want too many magnets going around here, because with that big chunk of a magnet, it might not you know, be at the correct angle with the head, and the heads could be popping off in the shoulder pads, so I didn't want to go too crazy with all that. So. The head's going fine, the shoulder pad's going fine. The only other magnets is his hands, and you gotta kinda, I put really strong magnets in his hands, so there's a big magnet over here, there's another magnet here, so this goes in very, uh, really well, so that's pretty good. This one didn't really need that strong of a magnet, but it's there anyway, I'm not even gonna pop it off, but this one did because you don't want the hand falling down or anything. But, so I also did another magnet on this foot here but not this one because this had more chunks of resin under here where I could put a magnet on this base and a magnet in the foot but there wasn't enough meat under here to put a magnet because I was afraid if you try to pry them off you might pull the resin with it so I didn't want to risk any of that. Um, other than that uh, what I did with him uh, we'll get in closer in a second because I don't have a lot of room in the studio he's so big I gotta get the camera all the way on back the other side. Um, so what I did is I found a nice duplicate color car blue paint and I did a nice uh, blue all over him and then what I did is after that I did some acrylics blacks, I did some other blues in there and then I kind of did some misting of some gloss uh, coat afterwards and once that was all done because I had to do this in the summertime it was like near the end of the summer we're getting close into the fall now so it wasn't super hot weather when I painted him but it wasn't really cold so it was like perfect and all the paint just laid on him with no issues whatsoever. Now, I also had a lot of freedom on this Apocalypse because I love Age of Apocalypse. So the client who gave it to me says, you know, he had some specific things he wanted to do, but he was like, do your thing. And I was like, great, I was just, I'm gonna have some fun with this. So I found a nice red car paint that Duplicolor Color makes. And I didn't want to go like that bright, bright red, you know, because with acrylic paint, you can really make a really bright red. And if you try to use any kind of metallics with reds, you can, with acrylics, you might get a pink. And that's one of the things I try to stay away with. So I found this deep red and I figured, this is Apocalypse, he's not gonna be, you know, in the comics he has that nice bright red, but in a statue, you want Apocalypse to be more darker, but still have that, you know, blue and red look from Age of Apocalypse. So I found a nice red, I showed it to him, he was down with it. And then once I did the reds, so I had to kinda, I kept the red uh, dupe colors with the, guard here, the arm guards, this part here, but the boots are actually acrylics and they're like a mahogany red. So I wanted to have different blues and shades all over him as well. Alright, 
So we'll kind of break down some more stuff. So after talking with him, there is some Apocalypse pictures that in Age of Apocalypse where his hands are actually this blue, but then his hands are like more of a metallic like the face. So after, you know, talking with him and I was trying some colors, I said, let's keep the hands the same as the face because that's kind of like, you know, the way he's drawn in the comics and we'll try to keep it true to that one picture that we were looking at. So I was uh, ran with that idea. Um, so for, as for the shoulder pads and cape, uh, the shoulder pad is the same blue that's here, except this blue, I didn't do any really like shades or anything. And I gave it a really, really nice gloss coat. So it's almost got like a mirror to it. We'll kind of get in a little bit closer. Uh, but this blue is kind of just straight up, uh, like dulled down a little bit. So that kind of worked out pretty good. And as, a, as far as the cape, he's got a blue cape. So... You don't want to have like the same blue on the body, the same blue on the shoulder pads, and the same blue as the cape because you kind of, he just kind of bleeds together. We, want to, we didn't want to bleed them together. So it's kind of like a flat, dullish gray blue here, a really shiny, shiny blue up here, but this different blue here. So we kind of, we got different grades of blues. I got grays, I got some metallics. You know, I was, I kind of did some outclad chrome up here with this part. I did some outclad chrome here. And then, uh, these parts here are blue as well, so I figured instead of doing the same blue here and the same blue here, we'll do outclad blue here, we'll do outclad. So we got kind of grades going around him, so it worked out pretty good. Now the one thing that uh, kind of threw us off, at, well threw me off, was we had this red here, and then there was these lines going around these red, so at first I thought let's make them a bright silver like the face and stuff, but then it was it popped out too much, and I said let's do a black metallic gray, and that worked out better than there. So we kind of had to fudge some things a little bit because this isn't actually like 100% comic accurate. But I wanted to try. But I wanted to make him pop. I really wanted this statue to really like this scream Apocalypse is one badass. And he's, you know, he's not just like a dull down character. So let's get in a little bit closer for you guys. Excuse the camera. Alright, so we got a little bit closer here. We'll kind of get in a little bit to the face. So I gave his eyes, you know, metallic red eyes. I really wanted those to pop out, especially when he hit certain lights. Uh, as far as the head, I kind of did a couple different blues and grays. So I kept this blue going up around this head here. I did a little bit of a different blue around the mouth, but I tried to match it. Then I did this like gunmetal gray with some other silvers and around the eyebrows, kind of like the same thing. So I figured, you know, He's not going to be just one solid blue and then that's it. Let's have some fun with all these little like veins and stuff. So he's got like veins so I did them like metallics of uh, grays and blues and kind of ran with it as you can see. So we'll pop this head off here and we'll get on to the screaming head. So now Apocalypse, he's not really going to have like, you know, a pink lip, you know, like gums and a pink tongue. So I didn't want to go that route with it. So I kind of gave him... A purplish mouth around in there and this tongue's kind of like purplish with white teeth because you definitely want the white teeth because he kind of but I made the teeth kind of rough and I didn't really gloss them up too much because I figured he's all shiny here let's give his teeth kind of dull you know I don't know I just kind of ran with that idea so that's what I did with that uh, mouth and uh, then you can see you know I did uh, some things in the back of the head uh, as you can see so I did some vein work and some uh, different stuff with these here so it just gives his head you know that metallic -y look and uh but also gives it some life uh let's kind of go over here a little bit so i did some trim work around the shoulder pads instead of just having blue i did some like you know gunmetal grays we did them uh outclad here i did some of this stuff over in there uh, i didn't want to go too crazy because you know he still is you know it's supposed to be a blue shoulder pads that's kind of what they drew but I did do some gunmetal stuff up in here, just like the vent work stuff, and I ran with that as well. So, kind of go into his hands a little bit. So as far as his hands, it's kind of like a, it's a, just a kind of a, a bluish uh, metallic I came up with. And I wanted the hand to kind of go to there, but then have this right here, so I kind of wanted to stop it. And now since this hand was so glossy, at least the arm guard part of the hand was so glossy, uh, I did some outclad uh, chrome here, and then I did a uh, clear yellow over it because he does have that one yellow spot there. 
So that worked out pretty good. And at first I was like, yeah, maybe we should change this to black and maybe do that. But then he was like, nah, let's keep it more true to the comic. So left that as is. So that worked out pretty good. And then uh, let's get down a little bit further here. I tell you, man, working on this statue was a workout this year. I mean, I'm glad I was able to get them all primed up and prepped before the winter because it would have been a nightmare trying to get this stuff on before the winter set. So I did a, worked a lot of late nights on him, too. So here you go with the boots. Uh, straight up boots is kind of like just a acrylic red. I uh, mixed in some mahogany to it and uh, just kind of did the bottom of the boot soles, kind of like a, more of the mahogany red brown. Uh, that worked out pretty good. Uh, just uh, at first it was too bright of a red, so uh, looking at these really bright boots with all this other stuff, we kind of decided to dull it down. And that's what happens when you work on statues. Sometimes you just got to test some colors and see how it works out and then go back and kind of tweak it. So, worked out pretty good. Alright, so on to the base. Uh, real quick, we're going to stop the video. We'll go over to uh, where how I did the bottom of a base with a nice sticker because uh, the client really wanted to have something nice at the end of the base, at least at the bottom. So we'll go check that out and then we'll come back up and finish out the video. Okay, so this is the bottom of the base and uh, I'm just showing you guys what's going on. I'll come back to this real quick once it's all said and done at the bottom, but I'll kind of just give you guys an idea of what's going on. So... Uh, when the client got a hold of me, they said he wanted to do a type of bottom, you know, design on the bottom of the base, you know, like you know, a lot of professional statues out there you get from factories. And I said, you know, it's going to be very hard for me to kind of try to mimic this artwork by doing with a hand or a paintbrush or masking. It'll just be way too much work. It'll probably get scratched because it will be acrylic on the bottom of the base, blah, blah, blah. So I said, why don't we try to do something different, like maybe... A template or a sticker or something and he was down for the idea he just says get back to me if I come up with anything so as the process went on while I was working on the statue I talked to my friend Meta John which is in Canada and he does a print he works at a print shop uh, factory with all you know for like t-shirts and stuff but he does all kinds of stuff and he's the one who's done all my t-shirts he's done a bunch of other like templates for me on stuff so he's a really great guy to talk to if anyone wants to get in touch with him maybe if you want stickers or t-shirts done or whatever he's really just great to work with and you can really come up with some cool stuff so what i did is in uh photoshop i took the apocalypse statue and i kind of inversed it and i black and white it and i brought out it just made it look like a pen art and then uh, what I did is I made an oval, I put a line, and I put the DX, uh, DXA designs, and I left the line there so I could sign it. So it's kind of like a really nice sticker on the bottom of the base. Uh, we have two of them just in case uh, when I go to put one on, something happens where I screw up, uh, you know, and then I got another sticky just in, if not, then he can have an extra one just in case down the line. And uh, when I talked to Meta John, he was like, well, I can only print on a certain size Heat, you can't really just do one sticker and you know stuff. So as a gift for me, what he did is he gave me a bunch of uh, my logo uh, stickers. So now I could like slap these on the bottom of the base. So you know whenever I do something, I could put that down there at the bottom of the base, which is kind of cool. But see, this is what I'm saying is like whenever you make a custom statue, if you want to go to step further, you can find someone or do something on the bottom of the base, you know, um, and you can really make it stand out even a little bit more. Even though I know we don't see the bottom of the bases a lot, but a lot of collectors, a lot of people like to have that specific thing extra. So it's just kind of a cool idea. So off camera, I'm going to get this on, and then we'll come back and suppose and I'll have the sticker on, I'll have the rubber feet going, and then we can go back to the final video. All right, so I got the sticker on first try. It really went on pretty good. I like the way it looks. I think, uh, you know, at first I didn't want the white... Uh, line going around but I think this plays to the sticker a little bit better and makes it pop out a little bit more so I think this works really well I signed it and then uh, I put these uh, felt pads on here and I could get these off at like you know like a Home Depot or Lowe's or something uh, the reason why I put these really big thick ones on there is because he's such a heavy good quality statue I didn't want to put on like really small uh, you know little uh, felt pads because you know, they could come off, or you don't want to put on rubber ones because if you try to move it, the rubber ones stick, and then it kind of, you know, you want some felt pads on there. So these thick ones are really good. You know, you could use these for bottom of chairs and tables and stuff, but this works good for here. Now, I was only going to put four, but I was thinking about it, and I'm like, hmm, if I do only four, you still got, even though there's not a lot of weight here and over here, 
Uh, I figured let me just put the extra ones over here just to be on the safe side because most of the weight is on the main feet and the main statues here. So I just kind of want to make sure everything's covered on my end and you know everything works out pretty good. So uh, all in all that's pretty cool bottom of the base. One of the uh, you know better looking bases I've done at the bottom of them of course. But you know as customs go on and how things develop always coming up with new ideas and stuff. So you know if you're ever working on something and you want to do something on the bottom of the base. I know even though you don't see it but you want to do something because you know it's there. There's no there, you know there's no no one's saying that you can't go to a print shop or have a sticker made up or add some kind of a cool design on the bottom of the base. It's just, you know, this is the fun of the hobby and you can always add more stuff and just make things pretty cool. So this is where I'm done, uh, you know, I'm done with this. So let's go back to the final part of the video and finish up. All right, so you saw how I did the sticker on the bottom of the base and it's a really cool idea. And like I know a lot of people are going to say, well, you don't see the bottom of the base, but you know what? It's just something fun to add to it. So... As in uh, my uh, kit review video, the base does come in three pieces, plus uh, these pillars are, uh, you know, uh, so it's like three and then four, so you got seven pieces, but it worked out pretty good at the end. So what uh, he told me is he really wanted to do some kind of a red thing in, in the middle of the base, you know, with all this stuff in there. So while I was working on him getting them together, I was like, you know, what can we do with this base? So I said, you know what, I got a really cool idea because I have... Uh, Every once in a while, I'll go on DeviantArt, I'll check out things, I'll just look at, you know, what people do with artwork and ideas. So I said, you know what, why don't I do gunmetal, you know, uh, t Tamiya in these areas, and then I'll do my clear reds over it. So it almost looks like it's glowing. So it's got some kind of like a, a glowing, you know, thing at the bottom. And when I showed it to him, he was really liked it, he was down with it, so it kind of gives it the feel that it's kind of some kind of like you know contraption he's on or you know a base or whatever um so all these tubes in here it's like you know i, I did some uh let's see we get a little bit closer on some of them so all those tubes in there and everything i uh i did different colors of like you know uh i did some like it looks like a rubber tube or like a brown tube uh some of them are metallic -y. Uh, I did some other stuff, you know, just, I didn't really go too crazy on the base because I figured, you know, it's kind of like a nice gunmetal gray that I found from Duca Color as the main color of the base. And I really didn't want to go too crazy trying to make all this pop out and then you take away from the statue because you really want to focus on him. You don't want to focus on the base. And in the beginning I thought about maybe we should change this stuff to purple or blue or, but I think the red worked out better. A nice dark, you know, base with red. And I, it was pretty, pretty cool. I did toy with it at one point. Come up here a little bit. These lines around in here of the base, I did put some red in there. And then it started taking away from him too much because your eyes started going around here. And it started blending into the feet. And I didn't like it. I also tried some blue and some silvers. It was way too much. It was just too, too busy at the bottom of his feet. And I didn't like that. So what I did is I just did straight up dark black in here. So it's still gunmetal gray here, and then it's like dark black in there. So, that is Apocalypse. Uh, we're going to stop the video one more time. I'll go back again so we can uh, give you a nice another 360 before uh, we end the video. Alright, so uh, that is a Age of Apocalypse resin kit that I finished up. Uh, a lot of fun. It's a good workout, so if you guys are ever, you know, if you do have one, you're working on one, or you're ready to pick, want to pick one up, I'll link in the description where you can, uh, you know, go to the Facebook page and see if there's any more available. Uh, really great statue. It's definitely, if I had the space and I had the money, I would definitely get one of these for myself, and I would make my Age of Apocalypse, you know, custom collection, but I just don't have the room in my small house, and... But he is just, he's awesome, he's huge. I mean, he would go great with a 1-4 scale line of, you know, X-Men characters from, like, Sideshow. I mean, you know, you, I would love to make myself a Nate Gray, which would be a 1-4 scale, like, standing next to him. That would be awesome, you know. Because, uh, like I said, I love Age of Apocalypse. I mean, you could throw Blink into the uh, set, you know, Cyclops to Jean Gray. I mean, this would be a great piece to have all of them next to him, you know. Awesome. But... That's, uh, that is Apocalypse. Uh, he is one badass statue. I mean, it's a really great sculpt. Uh, it's one of these sculpts, I think, that it, once you get all the paint on and you can just start to see all the detailing and the look and, you know, just how badass he looks. Uh, try to get out of the light a little bit. 
getting a little bit a little closer. Um, if any of you uh, new collectors out there have never read Age of Apocalypse, uh, I suggest you check it out. It was a great storyline for its time. I still love it. It's probably my favorite. And uh, I really do like the way the statue came out. Really cool. Uh, hopefully you guys like the way the colors and the scheme that I did on him. It was, uh, it was an adventure, I'll say that much. Got my forearms pretty much uh, beefed up from working on him. He's so damn huge and heavy. But like, that's a good thing because he's a good quality statue. It's not hollow. It's not cheap. You know, resin that's going to smash and break. It's uh, pretty cool. Um, one of the things, too, is uh, the guy who's uh, had me do this, he's going to come and pick him up because we just... You just can't really ship this. I mean, if I had to ship him, you know, we're talking the body, uh, the shoulder pads with the heads, and then the cape separately with the base because you really want to be careful. But, I mean, if you're an Apocalypse fan and you love Age of Apocalypse, I mean, this is a statue that you would really want in your collection. And, like I said, I had a lot of fun working on him because, hey, it's, it's Age of Apocalypse. So, there you go. Age of Apocalypse all done. Hopefully you guys like the way it came out. Thanks for watching and I'll be back with some more videos.